The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Alliance Australia Life Insurance Limited, ABN 27076 033 782, AFSL 296 559, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie McIntyre, Director and Financial Planner at Mac Financial in Geelong. I love being part of the financial planning profession and in particular helping people build and enjoy their wealth. Together with the Ensemble team, we have put together a retirement podcast series to dig into the retirement advice space. I hope you enjoy and pick up some great ideas in today's episode. At Allianz Retire Plus, we believe that all Australians should be able to live their lives with certainty and not have to worry about tomorrow's what-ifs, market volatility, or whether they have enough money for the future. That's why we're committed to delivering innovative retirement income solutions with a guaranteed income for life. We're proud to be part of the Allianz family that's been helping Australians for over 100 years. With Allianz Retire Plus, it all adds up to certainty. Hello everyone and welcome to episode four of the Ensemble Retirement Podcast Series. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the impact that advisors can have by providing certainty in retirement. My guest today is Natalie Phillips. Natalie has been working in the retirement product space since 2010 and Natalie is the current New South Wales State Manager for Allianz Retire. Natalie and I are going to chat about creating certainty in a retirement plan and how this impacts the certainty that clients are seeking and helps their future outlook and also their mental well-being. Natalie, welcome to today's podcast. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for having me. With that, let's kick off. Let's talk about the word certainty. Certainty and how we can help clients with the perception of a certain future. Um, Nat, you get out and you speak with lots of planners. Um, You're nat- naturally from a product space, but tell me about some of the things that you talk with planners about every day about certainty. So I think, uh, yes, I have been doing this a long time. I won't disclose how long because that'll show my age, but um, and, and actually I've just come off um, the back of a, a trip up the Mindels Coast uh, with the FAAA and another product provider. We had some peer group sessions and none of the the insights that advisors provided were were of a, a surprise to myself. It's what I've been discussing over the many years that I've been doing this with with many officers and, and, and advisors. And it's around certainty means different things to different people. So that doesn't really <laughs> cover off uh, certainty broadly, I know, but I think it's really important that, uh, and I think that sort of highlights the importance of the relationship planners and advisors have with their clients. As we know, it goes far deeper than, you know, a first meeting or second meeting. Some of these relationships have been built over the, over the years. You get to know their family, their goals, their objectives. Um, I always joke that planners are half psychologists, half half advisors. Um, and I think that's really important is that, that certainty means different things to different people. But I think the word certainty has um, uh, become more pronounced um, in some of the meetings that advisors are having um, for clients specifically in retirement, not so much in accumulation, but definitely in retirement. And I think there's a few reasons for that. One of those being that clients are aware that that they're likely to live longer. There is a lot more noise in the media and an awareness that that as a nation we're living longer. We now Australia is now the the got the third highest life expectancy in the world. Uh, obviously, Monaco and Japan hold um, first and second place, but but we are definitely living longer, and there's a lot more awareness around that. And also, the quality of life for a lot of those that retirees is a lot higher than say what it was 40, 50 years ago. So they are much more um, focused on enjoying retirement, doing you know those things that they've always wanted to do, travel, um, spend time with the grand grandkids, etc. Um, and so those goals and objectives mean that clients probably need a little bit more certainty in their portfolio than say, again, what they did 30 or 40 years ago, because they know that they're living longer and they really have those uh, ideals of what retirement is going to look like for them. And they want to make sure that that those um, goals and objectives are met. 
Yeah, thanks, Dad. I look, there was a bunch of things in there that we're going to be able to dig into throughout this podcast today. Um, uh, three key things I just noted down was, uh, well, the word certainty, and we'll dig into that a little bit further. Uh, I wrote down the word trust because I think um, trust is a foundation uh, for, let's call it clients, and also let's call it the industry and everything um, to to be built to provide a, a perception of certainty. Um, so I think that comes off the back of trust. And you also mentioned, I think, um, we're part psychologists. Um, I've had many clients say to me, thank you for the financial therapy session today. <laughs> uh, so, um, look, I, I do agree with you on that. No, I think, I think advisors have, um, have shifted over time and have been doing this for quite a long th- time. And that is, um, really digging deeper into clients' lives um, and getting a very deep understanding of what really drives them and what they really want. Let's let's talk about certainty. And you touched on one thing, um, which was most people seem to have a, a really strong level of certainty in their accumulation life, or let's call it their work life. Yeah. And I suppose there's a there's there's systems that support that. Um, I suppose there's industrial relations that supports people being employed and, and having a great sense of certainty of having an income. And those those systems give give people confidence um, and, and, and and they trust those systems and in certainty. And, and as we progress to retirement, it becomes a little bit less certain because, oh, I suppose you're on your own, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, those forced contributions. Um, I know some of them are, are, are not forced, but but you know we're building um, our retirement savings, um, and that's quite structured. And our employee uh, employers tend to handle that. Um, and then it's almost like we're let loose <laughs> once we meet a condition of release. So if you don't have a planner, I'm a huge advocate for uh, um, having an advisor in your life for many reasons. Um, but yeah, if you, if if the client doesn't have some guidance around that, I mean, there's there's a heap of risks that they're not going to be aware of, and then they're not going to be able to uh, manage in retirement. Yeah, absolutely. And and when you talk about risks that they're not aware of, and I think it's most people, particularly PAYG employees, and maybe just to put them into a box for a moment, um, they've had the the systems in place that have supported them. You know the there's SGC contributions that are going in and sort of it's it, it's all sorted for me. Um, and they, they trust those systems. And, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of things that um, people can do through that accumulation phase with a planner to even improve that. But there are, there are a group of people that don't. And that's what create, they're generally the ones that are least certain when they get to retirement because right. it's a lot of, it's a lot of unknown, right? Absolutely. Yes. And I think, you know, the goalposts have changed significantly. Again, like I said earlier, from 30, 40 years ago, um, you know, it's a very different world that we're in. And um, with life expectancies, especially in Australia, um, being much higher than they what they were, um, you know, there's a there's a much longer time frame for which clients need to, to plan for. Yeah, absolutely. Look, one thing they do have certainty over is if they don't have enough money at retirement, the government will step in, right? The age pension will will step in at certain levels, and it's it's really, I suppose, the age pension is there as a catch all, a, a little bit like when someone's unemployed in the accumulation phase. The Centrelink's there as a catch all to make sure you've got some money coming in to have a have some standard of living. Um, but we're all going to provide for ourselves to have a stronger standard of living in accumulation as well as in retirement, right? Absolutely. And it's interesting you're talking about a, a catch-all, and I think as a as a couple, the age pension um, can suffice as actual absolute you know bare necessity. But this is very much anecdotal feedback. But um, I've just like I said, come off the the back of a regional trip, and what's really interesting is that that a lot of advisors are starting to um, become aware that that single pension, um, you know, is not really sufficient even at a bare minimum, and that's because. Your bills really don't go down that much. Food, yes, but the, a light on in your kitchen still a light on. Your rates are still your rates. A lot of those, um, uh, you, you know, utility bills they don't go down that much, and the cost of living, as we know, is is actually sky high at the moment. So, um, as a couple, maybe the age pension would be a sufficient fallback option. But I'm starting to notice more and more advisors and clients, there's some concerns around that single age pension if a client decides to stay um, in their own home still. 
Yeah, look, I, you're definitely right, Matt. We 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 look at those numbers. Um, a single pension, uh, on the assumption that a single person owns their own home, um, is certainly not going to cut it. No. Um, and uh, I mean, in my view, you kind of. I don't know the exact figures on the poverty line, but you would be under that because you just don't have the cash flow to, you know, support everything you may need. Yeah, absolutely. Look, let's not focus on the um, age pension, but that, but what that does is gives everyone a level of certainty in retirement. The superannuation guarantee scheme, or uh, whichever term we use for that, but superannuation guarantee legislation um, also provides for those that have worked along the journey. And then there's also a conversation about males and females that often happens in the media. Um, and really, it's the lower income earner that gets impacted by the SGC. So yeah, really, there is some systems in place to get you to a point. Um, but what we what we want to talk about is creating certainty in a retirement plan. Um, and and help people or help the advisors out there and have a conversation about how can we create certainty in that retirement plan so clients can spend their time not worrying about funds running out. And look, let's let's shift over and have a good conversation now about, let's call it products in the marketplace that can uh, support that. Um, really, it all starts from good planning and good conversation with the, cl- with the planners, right? So let's talk about, let's let's jump over now and have a conversation about retirement products and particularly the space that you're in that um tell us about how the product outcome that allianz um provide can provide some certainty in retirement for for well not just clients but for australians yeah absolutely um so just to give everyone a little bit of color allianz retire plus is relatively new to the australian market so we've only sort of been in market three years um but it's very well established overseas um, especially in the US, they've been around for about 13 years, the investment arm. Um, a lot of people don't realise, but um, actually we own PIMCO. So from an investment um, uh, side of things, uh, they run the yield within our statutory fund. And um, I think Allianz now was hit number one worldwide uh, as the number one insurer. So again, a huge company. And the beauty of that is that we can leverage that strength of, of a huge parent company here in Australia and the um, the calibre um, of investment specialists overseas to sort of create these new innovative um, income streams or retirement products for clients. Um, so that's really exciting. So I joined um, the team in March this year, and part of the reason for me joining is because of their focus on retirement income streams for clients, uh, but making sure that the, the products that they were launching were very client-centric. So just to give everyone a bit of background, um, they, they've done a lot of research for the product team here. have done a lot of research with both advisors and clients about what they expect um, and um, what they expect and need from from their super. And there was two surveys that really sort of um, uh, that I like to highlight um, that they ran with clients and also advisors. What we found from a client perspective is that lifetime income from a client super was one of the number one priorities or goals. Um, I don't think there's any surprises there, but 44% of the of the customers or clients that we surveyed said that was their number one priority. That's what they valued the most. And then again, not so unsurprisingly, um, the advisors, um, if you look at what key risks they were looking to mitigate against um, in retirement for clients, it, it, it was a lifetime income stream or mitigating longevity risk. So it's funny that even though it was worded differently and the approach to both clients and advisors was different with the surveys, the the, the resounding um, outcome of those surveys, uh, again, no surprise, is that that clients and advisors are aligned in the fact that they expect and want to provide lifetime income streams to clients in retirement as part of their portfolio. So, so again, they did a huge body of work um, around, you know, what do clients actually want? Uh, And one of the things, and I think, again, it won't surprise any advisors listening, but what came out of that research was some of the barriers to entry on um, to more traditional lifetime income streams that are in the market has has been access to capital, flexibility around capital, uncertainty around what the death benefit might be. Um, And I think that's that's fair, um, that that's probably across the board. And I'm sure, Jamie, you would have experienced that with some of your clients as well. 
um, in, in your meetings with them around retirement planning. So Allianz Retireplasts took on that goal and objective really seriously when they were looking at forming a product. Um, and to cut a long story short, they've they've formulated a retirement income stream, a lifetime income stream called Agile, and that provides a lifetime income stream to clients for as long as they live. Um, so there's an obligation there from the statutory fund. So it is an insurance product. But the the key difference between this offering and what else is in market is this flexibility around access to capital. So you can do partial withdrawals up to 5% annually. And then after a 10-year period, you've got full access to the money because we know some clients don't buy green bananas. I know that <laughs> they, uh, they at a lifetime outlook, could be a little bit too long for them to commit to. So I think a 10-year time frame with the option to continue on for life is much more palatable and gives advisors a bit more flexibility with planning as well um, for the future. Yeah, I think there's a few key things to, to come out of that, Nat, which we'll dig into. Um, look, I'll have a chat about the surveys and what I experience. Uh, and um, whilst mine is not a survey, mine is experience with talking with you know, hundreds of, cl- of clients about retirement and what their greatest fears are. I think even if I go back a layer, you mentioned about PIMCO and we talk about certainty and I I underpin that conversation with trust. Um, Allianz Retire or Allianz is a very big company. Um, PIMCO is another big company. So that that adds a a really good layer of trust, I think, for not just the clients, but also the advisors, um, which is really, really important. And we talk about the survey and what I experienced, look, fundamentally, every person's greatest fear is running out of money in life, whether it be an accumulation phase or decumulation slash uh, retirement phase. So that fear is, I think, embedded in everyone's psyche for their whole life. I need money to do the things I want. I, I can't be running out. And particularly with retirees, but let's let's have a talk about a little bit more about flexibility. And I'll come from the planner's lens first. Nat, prior to our podcast, we had a really good chat about a few things. And I think planners um, who are who have been part of what I would say in air quotes, the industry for a long time, have had product providers um, with a lens of what the product provider wanted out of planning, really. Um, yeah. And, and we've all been Look, I think in a way indoctrinated by product providers in the past, but the past is the past. So let's let's talk more about today. But I also think, um, and talking to other planners through this podcast series and, and also speaking with them um, in general, there's this fear of planners as well as fear of clients about those product providers want to get my money and don't let me get it back um, and lock it away on me. And I'm not really sure about that trade-off because life changes. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, look, it was really good to hear you talk about the flexibility of capital. Um, and uh, and I think that's really important for the planning, um, well, for all of us planners out here to know and understand and and to um, give further consideration that, that a, a product such as Allianz Retire Plus has and other providers uh, out there have, are offering flexibility. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that, that doesn't have to be a trade-off. Traditionally, there's been a, a real trade-off or almost a bet against the life company on who's going to live longer. Though, it, very interestingly, um, if you look at the data, again, this is a bit of a, a side joke, but ACT actually has the longest life expectancy and there's a bit of a joke within um, our four walls here that um, that's because most of them have government pensions <laughs> that never run out. They, they're, they're trying to outlive their um, their, their government pension. So uh, uh, there's quality of life and a whole heap of other things that go into that, but that's super interesting. So the ACT has the highest life expectancy um, in Australia. Oh, look, that, that doesn't surprise me. Um, look, we talk with clients about, um, I'll call it when you're moving into retirement and from a different perspective now than just money, is you know having things to do and really having money to do those things and a and a reason to live, uh, I think is one way to sum that up. And I'm not surprised when you say that um, that the ACT do have the longer life expectancy because while they're underpinned financially, I think that's a reasonable assumption. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll be moving to the ACT. <laughs> When I retire, 
uh, though it is a long way from the beach. So um, it's a, that's a trade-off in itself. Nat, I don't perceive you for the time we've spent together as being a government employee, though. <laughs> yes, I might. I, I might. Um, I might have to just stay there during the week. Hopefully, that still counts, and then transition on the weekend back to the coast. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, very good. Um, look, and I suppose it's a good opportunity to to have a conversation about. Um, the outlook for clients and and mental well-being by having certainty. Um, look, you reference the ACT. I, I think it would be. I think it's reasonable to assume that um, having the certainty of income has certainly got to be great for well-being and and I use mental that, health. Mental health and and I suppose I, I did say the reason to live. Whether that's the right way to put that. But, you know, having something, having money underpinning the ability to go and do things that bring value to your life, really. Absolutely. So, so it, yeah, it becomes less about what the actual income stream is, though Though the rates these days, as you would be aware, are very attractive, uh, especially where the cash rate um, is currently sitting compared to what it, where it's been over the last few years. Uh, but beyond that, I, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think it's it's like when you're a an employee, if some someone said to me, Nat, you you can be um, you can have a base salary with bonus upside, or you can just be, have a fully variable um, uh, wage that's based on your performance. It, 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 I think I would guarantee most people are always going to go for that base salary because it's that certainty that that we crave and uh, we find necessary to give us peace of mind um, and um, you know live our life without that added stress of. Where where is that income going to come from to pay you know the the bare essentials? So I actually think absolutely that it, it also plays um, from a mental health perspective a great role in just providing consistent, boring, um, reliable cash flow to to the bank account every month. I think that's really important. Yeah, and I think I think nearly everyone wants that. You know, I, I mean, we could branch off into different types of people and things like that, but uh, or those with different levels of wealth. Um, but fundamentally, we all want some security. And I think even if I reflect back on COVID, um, you know, it was a good time to be grateful if you had a roof over your head and you had food and water, right? Um, Absolutely. And, and and money coming in to do that. I mean, that's a different conversation that the government gave everyone some money to make sure of that. But what we're talking about is um, more around your own money and getting that certainty from a regular income coming in when call it times are tough. Now, one thing you mentioned a moment ago was, um, look, uh, retirement products with certainty are more attractive in the current economic environment. You know, rates are, are, are higher than they have been. But really, I don't know, Nat, is that, the, is that for you something that's, it's, it's a nice to have at the moment, but I suppose a few years back, those rates weren't there. Yes. Um, it's still really important to have certainty of income at some level. Would you agree? Absolutely. And also, I mean, there's a lot of product providers in market now, and we, we spoke about this before the podcast. Um, you know, you've got Generation Life, you've got Challenger, AMP North have launched a product on their platform. And so I think there's greater awareness that, that having something um, to underpin the portfolio that's going to pay a lifetime income stream for the life of the client is really important. But a lot of those products allow you to participate in upside. So, so those days where it's just a, um, a fixed return, which is what the original annuities were, if you go back to Roman ancient Rome times, uh, when the first annuity was sort of born. But um, those days are almost gone. Um, majority of the the providers, actually, I would say all of the providers now allow you to participate in upside. So, uh, with some downside protection. So, um, absolutely, you, 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 even if you're uh, locking it at a perceived low rate, um, those clients that say invested in a lifetime annuity with CPI protection, say two years ago, I mean they've they've seen their payments increase dramatically this year with where CPI is at. So it's absolutely um, a, a, a little less about the return and also about peace of mind and security. Um, and if there's ability to participate in upside, then maybe the the initial rate is less of a concern. Yeah, absolutely. Like it might be, well, not might be, it is more attractive right now with um, higher rates of uh, return, potentially when you, I was going to say when you lock in your contract, that's not the right term. So you're talking here about flexibility, Matt, and that's a bit of my old thoughts, right? Yes. When you, yep. when you, when you take on a, um, 
an investment and your advisor recommends uh, an annuity of some type, um, you're coming in at, at an attractive time. Look, maybe no different to uh, investing in an allocated or account-based pension at a time when markets are down. You know, the upsides, there should be there straight away. But I think a key, a key thing we should talk about, Matt, is what you started to talk about was you reference CPI being something that's been a great benefit to those that own or have these investments now and annuities. Um, would it be fair to say that the flexibility is there will help people, I'll call it, run through the cycles of economics over time and you reference the 10-year structure that's available? Um, what's your thoughts on that? So I think with the 10-year the um, structure, that's new and unique to, to us, just to, to clarify. So others in market are much more a lifetime commitment. Um, so I think that that 10 year commitments um, much more palatable with the research that that we had um, uh, internally with, with clients and and advisors um, they found we we all sort of discussed it that 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 10 year is um, a, a much more flexible roadmap to deal with than say a, a 30 year time frame for a client because as we know a lot of things can change clients can get divorced uh, you know they, they might have a death of a loved one. Um, you know, they might have a health scare and and decide to to cash out all their money and go on a worldwide trip. So, so I think that added flexibility is is really really important, and that's really resonating well with with planners in the market. Yeah, Matt, do you have conversations with planners about? And I've I've had these conversations with other providers in this space. They they talk about um, from the view of the annuity side, which is um, if a, if a, if a husband and wife had a million dollars investable, so to speak, and let's assume it's all in their super fund because they've accumulated it together over time. The, the conversation I've had previously is that you potentially look at putting a part of that money into an annuity, which could also mean that you also have some money available on the flexibility side. Just talk me through that in the view of, well, Allianz Retire Plus and their products and what you guys think about that. Absolutely, and again, that's across the board. So, so I, I previously, obviously, worked at Challenger. For those listening that know me, um, and then I moved across, as I said, to Allianz Retire Plus in in March this year. And one of the the key um, things that a BDM or a product provider will will look at is, you know, will the product provide benefit to the client, and if so, what type of allocation uh, might be suitable. And I think what's really great is that a lot of the product providers now have spent a lot of time and effort. Um, producing uh, calculators and tools to assist in that in that conversation, and to also look at where there's there's value to be added. Um, Allianz Retire Plus, we have a tool and calculator at this point in time. Um, it's available only to advisors, and it is deterministic, not stochastic. Uh, but what we've found in market is that currently a lot of advisors still use through X Plan deterministic modelling, and and what that will look at is is an allocation appropriate. Does it provide an added benefit to the client? And if so, what amount? So um, a lot of the the um, BDMs and BDAs that I work with ac- across the industry, there's, a, there's a, a very big awareness now that we need to help and assist in this space alongside the dealer group. So a lot of the research, internal research uh, guys within your dealer group will have a, a view on this as well and, to, and hopefully provide some guidance. But absolutely, the, I think those tools and calculators across the board are really integral and important to, to providing um, a, a guidance on the allocation that's provided. But typically, um, what we're seeing is a, is a 15 to 25% allocation to these types of lifetime income streams in the, in the client's portfolio. Yeah, and, and I think I heard you say you're building out more tools, uh, that for the advisor, the advisors, um, and and it's I suppose for us... <laughs> Interrelated advisors, some are fairly entrenched in their ways as well. Um, they're all open for something new, but, you know, something's working really well. Um, and, you know, it is is what's the best way for an advisor to start to resource this information, maybe from a an initial connection way? Um, it doesn't have to be ring Natalie or, you know, um, have a conversation. Where, where can they go to find good tools, not just Allianz Retire Plus, but where can they go and research their own information? Absolutely. So I think um, there's a there's a few white papers that are, that are available in terms of asset allocation. So Mercer have a really great paper, and if anyone's interested, I, I might actually shoot that through to you, Jamie. I have a copy of it, so I'll shoot it through to you. 
um, after this podcast. And for any advisors that that request it, absolutely. That that um, I'm aware that it's online, so you could probably actually Google it. So it's Mercer White Paper. It's a few years old, but it just looks at what type of client would benefit from a lifetime income stream and what particular allocation might might be attractive or produce the the optimum or best results for these for these clients and. What they've actually done is they've built a matrix where it looks at the client's um, starting super balance, what income they're projected to to draw down year in year out to to meet their goals and objectives for for retirement, and it, and it comes up with a um, with a suggested allocation. That's a really good place to start. So that's that's a Mercer white paper that they produced, um, and then oh, there's loads of tools and calculators. I'd be very very um, Surprised if the advisors weren't aware of some of the other tools and calculators provided by other annuity uh, providers in the market. And like I said, we've also got our new calculator and tool that's available to advisors um, online um, where we'll look at it is an allocation to Agile or a lifetime income stream appropriate and what type of allocation um, would you know provide the best value to a client in, in retirement. Uh, further to that, though, I think the the service provided by BDMs and BDAs in the market has really stepped up over the last few years. And uh, we actually have a little template, a mini fact find that advisors can fill out. We don't need client uh, names. Obviously, that would be um, uh, you know probably too much information. But in terms of age, um, their goals and objectives, their starting super balance or projected super balance at retirement, uh, what are they looking to to achieve in terms of income? We can really quickly model out um, particular scenarios with, within minutes and, and get an email back to you within, you know, probably 24 hours. And, and most of the players in the market do that. So they'll look at the client's goals and objectives, play around with the tools and calculators. And the great thing with the tools and calculators is there's no there's no agenda. All the assumptions um, are variable and amendable back end. So you can actually give us your dealer group assumptions or your um, office boot. If you're a boutique office, your your projected assumptions across all asset classes, uh, we can um, actually model a particular client scenario for you and send it back for your viewing. And that that I mean, in terms of efficiency, that's great. But everyone needs to be all officers and planners are looking at becoming more efficient. And I think if you can actually just initially look at something, uh, and we could do some of that legwork. If there's value there, great. Obviously, that you know you can it can continue on. Uh, looking at whether that an allocation to a lifetime income stream is appropriate for a client, and if it's not, you know you really haven't spent much time on looking at your possible alternate alternatives for your SOAs for clients. So as we know, um, looking at alternatives is part of your SOA um, requirements. Um, that varies depending on your your licensee and your dealer group, but I think it's a great value add. Yeah, look, you just got me thinking about from a scenario's point of view and um, a, a, a conversation that's becoming more common um, with with clients is th- they're a little bit more educated and they're a little bit more mindful of their, let's call it their best 10 years in retirement. And then w- what I mean by best is more active and they'd like Absolutely. to spend, have flexibility to spend. And, um, you yeah, know, I was just thinking about for myself, um, you know, those clients that from 65 to 70 and want to spend a fair bit and that might sit around their allocated pension type money um, and then a long-term annuity that sits alongside that, let's call it lifetime for a moment, um, with flexibility, by the way, Matt, we need that, <laughs> um, that would give them, you know, underpin an income amount that sits together with Centrelink and, you know, that's potentially satisfactory for most people as well. So it might tie... I think it could tie in really well for that type of scenario as well. Absolutely, um, a, a, a rule, a, a, a school of thought, I should say, but a, a general rule that I know some advisors that are utilising lifetime income streams use. They actually will get their client to do two budgets: uh, a budget of of act for active retirement, and then they'll look at and what are your bare minimum costs. And what's really interesting is, especially those that are based in Melbourne or, or Sydney or are more city based. You know the the basic cost of living age pension doesn't cut it even for a couple. So no. so you sort of need to look at you know even though they're spending seventy or eighty grand in the active phase of their retirement, they might need still need fifty thousand a year um, to cover off their their bare essentials. And so what is the guarantee that that's going to be provided at the back end? So um, look, it's, you've still got a lot of options. You might receive an inheritance. There's um, the possibility that a client will downsize. Um, but the other interesting uh, point on that, I had a really um, uh, great meeting with an advisor on the Northern Beaches 
recently and, and I was a little bit shocked. I should be more aware. I'm a local up there. I actually lived up, up that way. Don't hold that against me. Um, but um, the, the client was downsizing, but there wasn't a heap of money left over because the, the, the property market, as we know, has got hot again. Um, and even though they were downsizing, they were moving to something that was closer to the water and a, and a newer uh, facility or unit. And uh, they, they st- after they paid all their fees and charges, there wasn't a heap of money left over, which was super interesting. They got a bit of money into super with the downsizer contribution rules, but it wasn't what they anticipated it being. Yeah, and that look, Nat, I think, um, and we're trying to speak as broadly as we can, obviously, today, but definitely those in um, inner city areas, the, the age pension's not going to cut it. Um, so they're those deeper conversations that definitely planners and uh, are having with their clients about you know, options like downsizing, but really I kind of use in air quotes again, the word downsizer means different things to different people. Absolutely. Um, you know, for some, a downsize is coming off a thousand square metre block and their house is run down to, you know, a 600 square metre block that's a um, nice brand new house and there's not much money in the exchange either. Um, but they're the conversations planners need to have to uncover how they can deliver certainty, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about annuities. Um, I'm really curious about annuities and I'm sure advisors are. Um, and I said to you, Nat, look, there's always that fear of a new product provider coming into your office, um, you know, with only a product provider lens. How are product providers uh, such as Allianz Retire Plus connecting really well with advisors and, and getting, you know, getting them the details they need so they can plan really well first and have good planning conversations? I think um, I think it's really important to just build rapport first um, with any advisor and just gain an understanding of their business and their client base and what they're looking um, to solve for because every client, as we said earlier, is different. Uh, every practice is a little bit different and how they run things internally is a little bit different. And, and you know, there's these structures we need to be aware of, SMA structures, do they have mainly self-managed super funds? So there's a, there's a range of things we really need to be aware of um, and then see if we, if we fit into that from a product perspective, if we fit into that ecosystem. Um, the the one thing that we um, took uh, on board from the body of research that we did with advisors um, is that there's sort of a lack of flexibility around holding a lifetime income stream within an account-based pension on platform, helping pa- uh, meet CIS minimums, paying the cash account. And that was, that was a, a really big theme in the research that we did. And so uh, without divulging too much or getting too producty, <laughs> Um, yeah. Agile again has solved for that. So, so when we launch on platform, which should be in November, and then hopefully all the other platforms will follow. We're talking to all of them. Um, that that's one of the goals. You can invest direct um, with Nord Super Money to um, with Alliance Retire Plus, but the goal and objective is to fit into the current ecosystem to make advisors' offices more efficient, not less efficient. So, Nat, as we come to the close of our podcast today, we've, we've talked about creating certainty in retirement. Um, we've talked about, in some ways, we've talked about from a planner's perspective, the stuff that I have shared. Um, we've talked from uh, an annuities perspective, um, how that can also create certainty. Look, for me as a planner, we are always working together, digging deep with clients, and really we're building trust. Um, and they're building trust of us, and and it's actually about us trusting them too. You know, to want to have planning done and progress through a planning process, so we can get them to, well, I suppose, having a perception of certainty with what we what we build and what we recommend, and then the work we continue to do to implement all of that over time. Now, Nat, tell me and tell the listeners, you work with planners, uh, you also uh, you work for a product provider. Tell me, in your view, how do planners provide certainty and how does an annuity product provider support that? Absolutely. So I think that you mentioned the word planning before. That 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 word is critical. So it's a plan. It's it's everyone's on the same page. There's, there's a combined agreement around what clients are going to spend um, and, and what the anticipated returns are projected to be from, from the advisor um, point of view. And it's really around committing to that plan and executing it. And I think that gives clients a huge peace of mind 
But B, um, you know, you need a plan for, for all things in life. And I think a financial plan is the most important because it gives you that security and that certainty. Uh, and the great thing about having an ongoing advisor relationship is you can reassess those plans. So if they're not, um, you know, they're not working the way that it was anticipated, it, it, that's why those annual reviews are so important because you're revisiting those goals and objectives, revisiting the plan and, and adjusting as you go along, depending on market returns, where the client's invested. And even their own um, risk profile, we haven't talked about um, risk profiling um, in great detail. I know it's very varied how that's um, executed in, in, in each office and um, with each planner and each dealer group, but it goes deeper than just a, than a fact find or, or a risk profile. It, it's really getting to know your client. Um, and I think that can change and that evolves over time. We know a lot of clients actually get more conservative um, as typically as they get older um, and that's that's just something to be aware of as well. So I think that role of a lifetime income stream or role of annuities does become naturally becomes more pronounced um, as clients get older because they, uh, generally speaking, do start to navigate towards certainty as they get older. Yeah, look, that it's an interesting one. A risk profile questionnaire is mostly a compliance tool if that's all you do, right? All right. Um, once again, I reference, we dig deep, we talk to clients on a deeper level about what is really important to them and what their real risks are, whether whether real or perceived, um, help educate them and, um, and make sure they take an appropriate amount of risk um, with their money, with their life, with everything. Um, so yeah, it's really important that we you know get to that layer and, and Allianz Retire Plus and annuity providers are going to provide some support around different risks for different clients. And I think that's something that I've taken out of today that, that you know, annuities sit in a place for clients to create a level of certainty. And um, Nat Phillips, thank you so much for your time today. All good. Thanks for having me, Jamie. My pleasure.